Good morning, moms. This is Randy with Master Books. I am with Kristen, my wife, and also the curriculum editor here at um, curriculum development editor, right, at Master Books. So All today right. we're going to talk about some of the new releases that come in. I was able to snag Kristen because she is part of um, the. Uh, <laughs> where are you going with that? She, she helped. I can't. I don't know where voice. you're going, so I can't I help you. I'm just like crashing. I'm trying to do too many things. I'm thinking I'm not seeing much happening here, so I'm hoping it's working. So, <laughs> okay. You never know with Facebook if it's working, if it's not working. So, That's all true. right. There Somebody joined. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Desiree. All right. Good. Okay. So let's talk about some of the curriculums that are coming in that have arrived now in the warehouse that we are excited about. The God's Design for Science Life for Beginners. Yeah. Okay, it's so this God's is God's Design. God's Design <laughs> for life, life for Beginners. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is this is an exciting project because we've known God's Design Science for a long time. Oh yeah, we actually used it at the very first first before it was an AIG product when when it was a little booklet yeah 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 so it's been really fun to watch this develop yeah so in this um, the beginning series matches the older the the life series there's two ways that you can use this you can use it as a standalone product or you can use it to if your older kids are also doing the God's design for life you can do it with them now the schedule isn't going to be quite as neat and lockstep like if you use it on its own you can do science the same days each week okay um, but you know you can develop that rhythm but with the older kids um, the way that the topics line up sometimes are a little different. So there might be an odd day that you hadn't done science on, like on a Friday or something. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it can be used with your older kids. And that's really, really a neat um, part of how okay. this book came together. So this has the supply list. It has a three day a week schedule. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's copy work. I like the way that they did the copy work, actually, where there it's traced. Yes. Let's see. Let's see if you can see that. So the scripture trace, um, even some of the answers are set up where the answer is provided and you trace it in, mm -hmm. which would be for the younger grades. Right. Okay, so one of the things that I'm seeing on God's Design Science, a lot of people, there's two two things. Number one, people tend to look at Master Books curriculum, and because we've removed a lot of the friction points, they tend to underestimate its teaching ability. Yes. So they tend to think, well, my second grader could do this, or my first grader could do this. So they've applied it to a grade range younger. When we have a grade range, for the most part, now sometimes they shift and change a little bit when we get feedback from the group. Mm -hmm. But when we have a grade range, it's for a reason. Right. When when we give our um, recommendations for a grade range, we're saying, okay, so let's say it's it's a first through third. Your your first grader, it's it's for a very advanced first grader or with a lot of assistance. Um, your average second grader, your third grader um, will still be able to do it. It might be a little on the easier side for a third grader. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's how we look at the grade ranges. And so if you're on the younger side of that grade range, you're really going to want to take a look at it and make sure that your student is able to do the work. But if not, if they can't do everything, just be prepared to step in, maybe explain some of the concepts, the vocabulary. Okay. You might go lighter on some of the written work, um, things like that. So there have been a number of feedbacks that have come in that said that they got God's Design for Life, the, the regular set, not mm -hmm. the beginners. Okay. And their students are struggling. And five years of development is a there's a that's a wide range third grade to fifth grade yes if I bring it into a third grade student there may be a lot here that I just choose not to do 
Like it, it's not essential that a third grader can regurgitate back every single thing that's in this book. Correct. It's introduction to concepts. Right. Right. We eat the elephant one bite at a time. Right. They don't have to know everything, memorize, retain it all. And I think that's a confusion point that I see is people thinking that if they're not getting it and they can't retain it and they can't quiz out on it, but a third grader doesn't have to cat test. No. And let's. Or not cat test. SAT. SAT. Yeah. Let's back this up a little farther. Okay. Let's just talk a little bit about science. For me personally, in my homeschool, my goal with science is not for the kids to be able to tell me all the intricacies of everything out there in life and everything that they've learned, everything that they've covered in their books. What I want to do is to number one, instill a curiosity and a love for the world around them. But even more important, I want them to see God's nature in all of what they're studying. Mm -hmm. And so for, for my personal outlook on, on my goals for my children is I want to stir in them an interest. So let's say they're studying um, God's design for life whether it's plants, the human body, or animals. I want them to just find it interesting. I want to stir within them that curiosity and, hey, that's really neat. And we watch all sorts of different nature shows and we read books and we have, um, you know, things that pop up on Facebook. And the kids and I will watch it and We'll talk about, oh, that is so cool. That's fascinating. And then we can take that um, really, uh, that curiosity that we've started to develop, and we can see God's nature, who he is in the world that he's created. And so rather than putting that focus on you have to learn all this information, I'm more concerned about hey, what neat thing did you learn that might take them to the next level of wanting to go learn more? Right. And then I want them to connect that. What does that tell you about God? Um, you know, one of our sons is, is um, he's questioning some things about God and who God is. And so when we see something really neat that we've learned about, we can connect that. Well, mm -hmm. God designed it this way because he cares about the world. And isn't that neat that he was looking out for this particular animal to give them this particular feature? Um, and so there's that love of learning that we want to instill for, that that's going to carry through with them by the rest through the rest of their life mm -hmm. not just today what are all these facts that you've memorized so we're not learning for the sake or not schooling for the sake of schooling we're actually laying a framework that they can build upon um, a meth almost like a, a a brain way of learning yes so that it's not about when I have this book that just introducing them to the fact that there is a creator. Mm -hmm. He, he created everything specifically and on purpose and by design. And then we can build on that for years to come. Right. So to, to now jump forward to your question about say a third grader that's struggling, struggling a little bit, what I would suggest is slow down, talk through the concepts, have discussions, stay relaxed. Don't mm -hmm. get tensed up because your student isn't um, understanding some things. Um, you can even skip over things that yeah, somebody isn't says, interesting. The vocabulary words, they're struggling to know all the vocabulary words. But for a third grader, that's that's a lot. Just even just talking the vocabulary words and having an awareness is enough. Is enough. Yeah. Is enough. They do not have to have a deep understanding. And, you know, all of this, especially for the younger students, there is there's so much new coming at them and their brain is just working 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 mm -hmm. to make sense and put connections together and so there's going to be things that a student isn't going to catch on the very first time that it's introduced right 
you know, they need repetition. They need to see these things again at a later point. And little by little, they're going to build, they're going to develop an awareness and a deeper understanding over time. And so we don't have to get stressed out if they don't understand, you know, the, the rain cycle or, right. you know, cells, if they just can't wrap their head around cells or some of the vocabulary words or whatever. Instead, the focus needs to be on really enjoying the subject matter, especially with science. Mm -hmm. You know, science is one of those things that, you know, it needs to be enjoyed first. Right. And science, the reason we learn science is really just to understand the world around us. Right. And so what we're learning, we can apply just little bits here and there to reinforce. But yes. We put a lot of pressure on kids to have to know all the vocabulary words, have all the answers, understand every classification. Some kids will, but, right. but some kids aren't going to grasp it all at once. Mm -hmm. But we have, we have a lifetime yes. to, to develop that love and learning. Mm -hmm. You're so distracting today because, like, I'm trying new lighting because that's what you're supposed to do, and and she sparkles like her necklace is sparkling, her shirt has sparkles, her glasses <laughs> have sparkles. She puts her hands up and she it sparkles. sparkles. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm a guy. Like I'm just distracted by the sparkle. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay, so this is this is if you have a third grader who's really who's really struggling. Again, you know, one of the things we don't like about grades is that it puts students into classifications and in the boxes that aren't always truth. And in third grade, there is, like you said, there is so much going on developmentally that to say a student is behind or ahead is, is such mm -hmm. a ludicrous concept to me. Right. I, I know that there are milestones that we want to look out for. But at the same time, when we look at, at our youngest daughter, she she didn't really come on until like closer Fourth, fifth, yeah sixth grade, and then all yeah. of a sudden it just snapped and she's like a sparkler but that you if we had taken her for diagnosis or anything else somebody would have said she's delayed she's having issues and it just took a little bit longer for her brain to process things and as soon as it did it just all clicked yeah so i just be careful not to not to attach too much to the individual child we have nine kids. Every one of them is different. We have mm -hmm. a three-year-old who is advanced. And even today, he's what, 13. He's, we call him an old soul because he just, he's just not like, he just has a whole different way of approaching life. Yeah. Somebody at our church said to me the other day, oh, I keep forgetting that he's, he's only 13. Yeah. Um, but that's because he acts more like an adult sometimes. He does. He does. <laughs> but he, he questions me like a father. He, he tries to discipline me like a father. <laughs> he tries to be my father figure. <laughs> he's a really good kid, and he's he's very, very smart. He's always been a thinker. Yes. And um, But he jumped on really quick in some areas. Right. But didn't have the motor skills, and it's taken even his development of that. But Right. His handwriting was a real issue. Um, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be patient with your kids. Let, let God write the story and unfold in them. You know, you're going to know when there's an issue that needs to be dealt with, but I would just advise everybody to be cautious, not to, not to jump too quickly or allow somebody to speak something over them in their life that is just normal in yeah. development. Another thing, now you were taught, you were pointing at this one, but you're talking about the older set, right? That they're having more of a yes. struggle with, yes. not the beginners. I just wanted to clarify that. Um, one thing that you can do with the older set is for a kid that's struggling is focus just on the activities rather than all of the reading and the vocabulary and some of that more intense thing. Just have some fun learning mm -hmm. about the topics through the activities. Right. right. So if you're able to do the activities, like I struggle at being able to do all the activities in such a course. But if you're able to, that's one thing that you can do because there's just so much that you can learn just by doing some of the activities that's provided. Yeah. Laura says that she, uh, her mom says she would have been labeled a special ed and she thinks she's a normal functioning above average adult. I agree, Laura. I think I am a normal average functioning above average adult as well. And 
there are some that might not agree with that, but as a student, <laughs> there was no doubt that people were asking what some of the issues were. And they were asking you what you're thinking a lot. I was asked that a lot. What are you yeah, thinking? What are you thinking? <laughs> I was thinking how stupid it all was, but <laughs> that's besides the point. Okay. So new in stock and shipping, our warehouse is, um, they are buzzing. And so they're, they're a little bit delayed in getting orders out, not far. Um, we brought in some extra help and, and trying to get orders out quickly, but just know that, um, if you're, if you're emailing or contacting or even on Facebook, we're trying to stay on top of it all. Uh, but right now is kind of the crunch time for a lot of families. So, um, Years ago, we used to send out lots of emails telling people, get your orders in early, get your orders in yes. early. Yes. <laughs> so that's the best way to prevent slight delays. Yeah. And these back orders, though, there, I think we have one station that we're set up today that's just trying to get back orders out as quickly as possible. So this is one that if you've ordered it, it's shipping. Right. But oh, and the the schedule is available as a download if you're doing it for with your older students. So your the daily schedule that's in this book is if you're using it as a standalone. But if you're using with your stand with you know with the older set of life, then you can download the schedule. Okay. And the other okay. thing to know about this is Answers in Genesis does produce an Answers in Den Genesis edition. This is the this is what the exclusive Masterbooks edition looks like. Right. Only available at masterbooks.com. Right. That sounded just like the home shopping channel. It does. If you order it from CBD or other places like that, you're going to get the answers in Genesis edition. So it won't have that nice um, schedule and yes. all that. And it'll come in individual books. I'll say one other thing. I know a lot of you have talked about perforations and pages and different things. Um, we're taking the feedback really seriously. It's a big challenge because different paper types, you wouldn't believe in the printing world that paper grain runs almost like wood grain. And so there's considerations that have to be made. There's different coatings and glosses and different types of bindings and everything. So this last batch, um, I know Tim's really been working on it. Look at those. The perfs are like Oh, yeah, those really look nice. Good. Yeah, those look good. The holes are punched well. The perfs are good. The paper, the quality of the paper, everything is really vibrant. Um, so uh, I, I really, I'm, I'm excited. And it has a really nice It smell. smells like a new book. Yes. It does. <laughs> kind of weirdness to be sniffing on books. But, okay. <laughs> The next one that came in is World Story Two: The Middle Ages. In homeschooling, a lot of us study the ancients over and over and over and over again, and because and it's easy, right? We incorporate a lot. The Middle Ages, the World Story Two: The Middle Ages, and then the next one. And Angela was here last week that was talking fun. about. Uh, if World you're Story on Three. Angela, hi. Yep, it was fun. We we ditched her at the end of the week, but yeah, that was um, kind of sad. Sorry about that, Angela. <laughs> we had to make an emergency trip to St. Louis to visit a friend. Yes, but um, the book is here. The teacher guide has gone to the printer, and so the teacher guide should be coming in. This book, um, I, I, I just tell you, I went through it this morning. One of my, one of the characters that intrigues me in history is Genghis Khan. It's not because he was brutal, he was brutal, but he declared that he was an agent of God and the reason I'm here is because you've disobeyed God and now you're gonna face God's justice. And that, that um, the fact that God actually did use Genghis Khan to bring about his purposes, but as you go through the book, um, again, the, the illustrations, they had a lot of modern illustrations, a lot of the, the ancient illustrations, but, so the start here, you've probably noticed that throughout the study of history, there are varying degrees of history, changing history-making people. Some of these history makers are responsible for wonderful contributions to mankind, while some are infamous because of their degrees of terribleness. Others brought wide sweeping changes to entire cultures through conquest and raiding. It's important for us to remember that although kings and rulers rise and fall, bringing blessing or disaster to the people, God is ruler of all and will have the last say. Read what Psalms 22, 27, 28 says. The whole earth will acknowledge the Lord and return to him. All the families of the nations will bow down before him, for royal power brings to the Lord. He rules the nations. Amen. In this chapter, 
we're going to become acquainted with a man who meets the criteria for being a history changer. Genghis Khan became known in history as the Mongol leader who conquered huge portions of the continent of Egypt, Asia, and even reached into Europe. His descendants conquered and ruled vast areas of the Mongol Empire and greatly influenced the history of the world. To have a history book that starts with that foundation that says, here's a man that the Lord actually used his terribleness and, and changed things, but also puts it in the context of a biblical worldview that says even in, even in who he was, God was ruler of all, is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Because so many history books just tell history, but they don't necessarily shape it tightly into a worldview that has um, application. Right, and it, it's really important to us that we uh, that our students can see the hand of God all throughout history and mm -hmm. everything that's happened in the dark times, in the good times, um, in the conquests. You know. So, like, you finish this chapter, and then the discussion comes up about a current president or a current world leader, and we can say, "But does God still rule the nations?" Right. And and so we're able to relate that wonderfully to today. In this book, I mean, it goes through and gives um, just fantastic illustrations in the color to talk about what was going on, his raids, um, how to connect it, and then... Another thing that is in this book that, that I really like is it doesn't just talk about the major events. Um, Angela also brought in the cultural things um, that were going on at the time and so all around the world um, there were God's goodness was being shown because just because there's something really dark and ugly going on in one side of the world God still has given us creativity to all men whether they honor him with it or not and there's some just amazing artistic things that were going on there mm -hmm. there was amazing scientific discoveries that were going on all around the world and so you get to see a balance of some good things really good things that were going on while some bad things were happening in some areas of the world. Right. And then there's a church history that goes along as well. So as right. this is going on, it tells about how the Mongol Empire actually affected Christianity and the Catholic Church and all of that. So you're not just learning about this individual. Right. You're seeing how God used him providentially through history to affect change and then how it affected the church and that how that affects us today. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I think this is an unbelievable book. The third book in the series is being worked on, and I truly believe this is going to be America's Story and the World Story 2 are going to become the premier history for homeschool curriculum for the right. next time um, because it really is a purpose-driven uh, yes. history curriculum, and that's where our heart is. Yes, this, you know, and look for, we encourage you to look for sparks. It's almost like the survival stars where they're, they're hitting the flint and all of a sudden there's a spark and then they try to kindle it. When you, that's, this is what I would encourage you in any of these ages, when you're working with your kid and if you see dad and the kid connect on Genghis Khan and what was going on and that little spark gets hit, then fan it, flame it, stop, stop what you're doing and let that build. Right. Let them go and explore it. Let them have a sword fight, let, you know, do whatever it takes to kind of create that brain connection that this is fun, mm -hmm. right? Our brains are making connections all the time. And sometimes we make school negative so that when they think about learning or they think about doing math or doing history, it just automatic goes to a dark place. Right. We want that path to start going to a happy place. And, and in mm -hmm. doing so, we, when you see that little spark or that interest, man, fan it. Don't let it go out. And then that'll begin. So the next time you come to an area, maybe maybe you can do away with the brain always going to the negative and you can start working it towards the positive. Mm -hmm. You should have saved that for your Thursday teaching tips. I've got a good teaching tips this week. Oh, good. Yeah. Win the day. That's, that's the teaching tips for this week. It's the first week of school. That for means the people. second week of, for some people, that means the second week is coming. That means we need to do some encouragement. So. <laughs> that first week is always hard. Yes. Oh, I'm exhausted by the end of that first week. And the second week 
It's a little it's better. A little, a little better. Once <laughs> but you, it's still once you tiring. Kind of your bearings, yeah. yeah, it's always because okay. you're getting everybody started and yeah. Elsie asked what grade this is for, or Ellie, I'm sorry, um, what grade World Story 2 is for or 3. This series is all kind of for your junior high. Four to, so to eight, eight, six, seven, and eight. Oh, six, seven, and eight. America's Story would be your Three, four, upper five. elementary. Yeah, sorry. I've worked with eight. so many different things, I have to think about it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, not just looking at a catalog, so I forget. Yeah. And then yeah, there sixth, are, seventh, and eighth. There are some people who are actually using these. They're doing a combination where you do all three books in one year and supplementing and making it robust. Um, it's designed. For it's designed for a good single book. Yeah, grade six, right? Good single, uh, one year program. But you certainly could combine all three into one and make it a high school course. Or if you wanted to, and you had younger students and you just wanted to do it as a multi-grade classroom, you could certainly read and discuss, and the younger students would get a lot from it, um, and, and you could modify it to do a full range of students. Right. You just want to be cautious. You want to read ahead and know what material is going to um, be covered. Because it's not all appropriate for... Younger kids, yeah. right? Okay. My story, too, is out. Um I I was thumbing through this, and it's actually pretty neat because the way Craig did, um, Craig's a pretty imaginative guy, and so the way he did this is you're on a different type of transportation as you go through the quest. So you're on a canoe on one, and a bathyscape, bathyscape, scape. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know how that's pronounced. I've never traveled in one. I have never either, but all the images <laughs> in the first chapter are people going through canoes. And and then, in case you're wondering, that is what a bath escape looks like. And so you're traveling Don't to, take our word for the pronunciation. You need to ask Craig. Yeah. I think it's bath escape. Bath escape? That would make sense. Not a bath escape. <laughs> I like to a escape way to with escape bath. out of your bath. <laughs> <laughs> bath escape. Just pull the plug. <laughs> <laughs> and that and they're going to Australia in the bath escape. Bath escape. Whatever. You better move on to a different mode of transportation. <laughs> Show some of the images. Yeah. So the canoe, and you can see how beautiful. It's kind of hard to see, but just how go. beautiful uh, the color is. How how awesome the way this is set up with a lot of different. Um, talk time, thankful time, activity time. Uh, Some of the it's it's very similar to one. Yes. Um, in the design and the layout of it, but different topics and just the fascinating. To me, what Craig has done with these books is he has set them up like you're taking a trip around the world. When I was when I was young, I'm not sure what grade, um, maybe fifth, sixth grade, there was a family that we knew that had actually taken a trip around the world. And sometimes we would sit and we would get to, you know, the old um, mm -hmm. the slideshows. The slideshows. We get to sit and watch their slideshows from their trips around the world. And that's what these remind me of. This reminds me of just a family going and okay we get to india what things are we going to visit in india and craig highlights you know maybe we're going to go over here and see this in india we're going to go over here and see that and we're going to talk a little bit about you know some of the animals and the culture and different things like that and it's just so fun because it just reminds me of just if we just were to take a vacation around the world what things might we find about god's creation and i just think it's fun I think it's a really good way to learn about other cultures and about other geographies. And mm -hmm. and also there's a big, it talks about the Tower of Babel here and relating the people mm -hmm. group and the fact that we're one blood, that there's, there we're descendant. Right. That we have different cultures, but we have families and we have mothers right. and fathers and similarities and draws on the similarities. Mm -hmm. So. You're talking about slideshow, and I know this is a big diversion, but my dad went to Israel, and so he did, I don't even know if I've ever told you this story, but he did a whole, um, he had his 
Israel slideshow. And when I was young, he made a bet one time that I could race from the bedroom to the bathroom streaking without getting a picture. And he got a picture of my backside. Well, he must have taken that image. And I don't know if he even knew it, but he put it in his Israel. <laughs> and so oh, we no. had we had another family over. <laughs> Pansfield family was over to our house. And we're watching, you know, here's this amount of olives. Here's this. And then all of a sudden there's my backside comes up in the, uh, in the thing. How old were you? Then? I was probably seven or eight. I was like, I would have been Cabe's age. <laughs> oh no! And of course, then he has to tell what that, why that's there, and what it is. And you were mortified. I was because at that point <laughs> it wasn't fun anymore. <laughs> All right. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> so that had nothing to do with curriculum. I'm sorry. <laughs> See how much fun it would have been to be my teacher in school. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Which leads me to my favorite. And I got to tell you, Kristen. He has to say that. Kristen wrote <laughs> Language Lessons for a Living Education. <sighs> so let me just give you a backstory. We both went to a private school. We came in from other schools. I came in from public school. She came in from a, what now would have been, um, Pretty, kind of a, a pretty advanced charter school because of the yeah. way that she did things. Right. And prior to that, I was in public school. Well, so, yep. So we came in. The school that we were in, some of you would know, is an ACE school, um, School of Tomorrow. The way that they do that is they test you before you come in. And if you show learning gaps, then a learning gap means you didn't know the material. You have to replace. So I came in in eighth grade. And some of those things like sentence diagramming and all that other stuff... I didn't place as well in, so I had to go back to fifth grade level in certain things. Kristen <laughs> placed like a year ahead of where she should have been. So we actually got to sit next to each other. We had little cubicles that you sit in, and we would sit next to each other, and she was kind of the superstar, and I was kind of not. And um, working my way from fifth grade through my high school career up, so it doesn't surprise me that she wrote a fantastic language curriculum because she's always been gifted with communication and she always says, why aren't you listening to me? So I, I have problems <laughs> with the English language, obviously, right? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, thinking, <sighs> I'm thinking it's not a surprise, but let me tell you what I'm really, what I love about this. You tell me, what do you love about this? I, I, I'm not big on, on a lot of the concepts that are taught in a typical language course. But what I'm really was amazed at as I'm thinking through was the critical thinking and the applied learning, um, the problem solving. It's not just one dimensional. Let's just learn about this. There's different formats. There's different things happening. So for a third grade student who's doing this, there's a lot of critical thinking skills having to be built into it. Like, Okay, so let's say here's here's a picture of Ruth and Naomi. And again, I love that picture, by the way. Me too. Laura, I, Laura helped. I think she I'll found choose pictures. Yeah, I think that was one of them. Laura sent to me as an option. And the smell of this book is exquisite. I gotta say, <laughs> we, some of them <laughs> I don't necessarily smell. like, but this one does. The, these these this batch really is is incredible. <laughs> They're, they're creating their own dictionary. They're doing different kinds of things. But then you have this picture. And in the picture, it says, who are the three people in this picture? Okay, for the third grade student, what you're doing is you're training the brain. You're training the student to be able to start thinking critically when they see something. You're not telling them who these three people are. This is actually something they're observing and then beginning to communicate who these three people are. And that's multidimensional. There's three ladies here. There's one lady who's crying. There's people who are sympathizing. Mm -hmm. It's a mother-in-law and her two daughter-in-laws. There's pain in this picture. There's support in this picture. There are so many words and dimensions to go. So for a third grade student, that's amazing. Well, one of the reasons that um, we ask questions like that rather than um, telling them and then this is the answer you're supposed to have. We want the individual student's experience to come through on this and there's no answer key for this. And so I would, you know, for these questions, I would really encourage the moms who are using this to not define the things 
for the student. Uh, for example, if the student says, focuses uh, just on Orpa, I mean, it gives the title so they mm -hmm. could read if they wanted, who, you know, who the characters are. But if, if they just focus on one person to the exclusion of the other ones, don't feel like you have to make them tell you about the other ones, number one. Right. And explore that. You don't have to just stick with the next questions. Okay, you answered that. Let's move on. You can go farther with that. You can say, oh, wow, um, you noticed Orpa above the other two. What is it about her? Mm -hmm. um, what do you know about her? How do you know that's her? You know, you can take those questions even farther. And um, I meant for those questions to be a beginning place for dialogue and a beginning place to start to teach the kids how to evaluate and observe things in an image that they see. So even how does this picture make you feel? Yes. And why? Mm -hmm. Okay, so for third grade students to actually be able to think Yes. and then speak out the way they feel. That's a lot of brain power. It is, and some kids will struggle with how does that make you feel. Some 49-year-old men will struggle with that. How does that make you feel? It. I would have to stop and really think about that. And so it's it's an opportunity to help your students identify how they're actually interacting with their world with what they see with what they observe with what they're learning and it's really important for them to identify those things mm -hmm. well and and i've said this before the, the reason we learn language is to be able to communicate better yes. and to communicate our ideas effectively because um, each of our children has a purpose a god-given purpose and the ability to communicate our ideas effectively and to listen um, as well and receive information is, is very important. And so this isn't just language for the sake of language. Right. It's actually developing a mindset to communicate. So yes. I'm like, kudos. I'm <laughs> impressed. I'm like, wow, this is, and the whole thing, there's a lot of, there's word studies, there's where they're creating their own dictionaries. Um, but little things like that, the stories that do the modeling and, and then open up time for talking, there's just a lot more to this than just a typical grammar course. Yes. Um, and we continue with the co-reading. Um, we found that that really works well in our home. I've talked to some other moms that have started using it and they really enjoy that process. But it's really hard to take a book and do the co-reading because you're trying to read ahead to find what would be appropriate. And so that's why we've highlighted um, suggested sentences. Um, that's an interesting, <laughs> it's very colorful. Um, we teach writing, um, learning to write a paragraph using the concept of a hamburger. You have your initial uh, topic sentence, and then you have your ending sentence, and all of the detail sentences come between just like a hamburger. So you have, have your bun, your top and your bottom bun, and then you, you fill it full of the good stuff good stuff, the details. And so that's how we teach writing a paragraph. And that's what we focus on. Um, what they're learning in this whole book is coming together with learning and practicing um, how to write a paragraph. That's the focus of level three, is just bringing everything together um, to teach the student. Because writing a paragraph is a big deal. And it's it's the foundation for all their future writing. And it's, it's hard, there's a lot that goes into it, but we've tried to simplify the process and we give them when they're writing it later, this must be the beginning when they're just learning about it. But later, oh no, here we go. So on this page, we've, we've boiled it down to three different things that they need to do. And so they can check those off as they do it when they're writing their paragraph. Writing would have been a lot more fun if they had related it to food for me. So, <laughs> <I'll bet. laughs> and that might even be a good one to actually make a sandwich and show them. Absolutely. 
Yeah, absolutely. You're you're uh, all that good stuff wouldn't really come together well in a sandwich without your top piece and your bottom piece. Right. So you need your good topic sentence. You need to wrap it up well. And if you change out one piece of the topping, you change the flavor of the sandwich. Yeah. So you actually. You can um, add onions or take them away. Just it, like a sentence or a description can do that. Right. So, yeah, a good marriage builder skill is to show your husband one of the pictures of, of in the book and then just ask him, how does this make you feel? Make feel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we are teaching young boys how to relate to their wives in the future. Yeah, that's right. There's, <laughs> there's all kinds of foundations. So when this. they grow up. Moms, you are doing your future daughter-in-laws a favor by te letting them identify how things make them feel. How to communicate. I didn't even realize I was writing a marriage-building book. It's true. <laughs> it's true. We don't I, – I think back to – there's there's a hierarchy of learning, and there's different skills that are taught at different places. Some curriculums are just very basic, and the challenge that we have is having a, a, a curriculum that's independently led so a student can do a lot of the heavy lifting mm -hmm. but also um, appealing to the higher brain level the brain function of abstract thinking right and so uh, this I, I'm I just think that this is is really a great program you're working on book four, four. level four now yeah and then next year uh, it'll be five and six and one yeah so the um, redesign for six and one yeah which is awesome so there's some there's some good things coming in 2019 um i can't i can't tell you because every time i do then then you guys don't yeah they're already going to be asking me for five now <laughs> exactly exactly and everyone's like stop doing that something that i would like to say about the language arts is in general is the first time students are introduced to nouns and verbs, they're not going to have this stuff down pat. Mm -hmm. And that's why I've built in the last quarter is reviews. And even each level builds, but it take you know, it, it takes it a little farther. But the reason the elementary grades no matter what curriculum you get, talk about nouns and verbs and all these basic things in every single level is because it students need that kind of repetition to understand it. And so it's like that first time you may get a little bit of it and then it it's solidified later. I always say that's why Mad Libs are out there mm -hmm. is because kids struggle with adjectives, adverbs, nouns, verbs. I have four fifth graders that are still asking me and they've had all of that. But when they're, you know, doing their writing, they forget. Right. And so they get confused of the difference between an adjective and an adverb. And so we have to go over it again. And so, yeah, that's, that's why we repeat those processes um, as we go along. Okay. So somebody says, um, is this a course that will help writing a paragraph? We're doing writing strands beginning two. Do I need to go back and do this and go through it a little quicker, then pick up with strands or do them together? What say you? Um, well, they didn't say what uh, grade student, but it never hurts to go back and uh, freshen up paragraph writing because it's going to be kind of hard to do writing strands without the basics of um, writing a paragraph. Yeah, I think as this program becomes more fully developed, my recommendation is going to be do the language lessons for a living education and then use writing strands as a series to develop the creative, expressive part of communication. Yes. Yeah, writing strands is really good for reading, um, you know, learning how to communicate your thoughts more effectively. This is kind of building the foundation. Right. Writing strands does a little bit of grammar on the go and, and works that out. But I think one of the reasons we have it more towards the fifth grade level um, is, is, to 
to use the foundations yes. here and, and you're beginning to do that and then build on it. So my recommendation will probably be when it's all said and done that a student would do language lessons for a living education through six and then move yeah. into like intermediate intermediate writing strands one and two to develop that the thought communication idea that the sentence writing and paragraph writing are kind of behind them. Right. And I, I'm not without knowing um, the age and the situation, they might not need to go back and do the entire volume. You might just need to sit down with them and just brush up how to write a paragraph. So he's in sixth. He's in sixth grade. So taking them all the way back to level three might be a bit much. If it were me, I'd probably just go over writing um, paragraphs. Right. You know, use you the hamburger. Use the hamburger. Yeah, illustration. I I probably wouldn't go back and do an entire the the entire thing. And if I did, I'd probably wait until four came out. Right. Because four is still is still working on writing paragraphs. So we're going to get into just uh, writing better sentences, um, editing our paragraphs, things like that. But they're still going to be writing paragraphs in four. Now, writing strands is a little bit more outside the box. It's not quite as format writing. Right. Right. So mm -hmm. it, it's you use what you're, is needed to complete your thought as mm -hmm. opposed to the traditional. Right. So, okay. Right. The other thing that we need to talk about with this course is the use um, on day four of the week. So in level two, they drew pictures and wrote a few sentences. Um, day four for levels three, four, and five we are utilizing the 101 favorite stories from the Bible. And what they're going to do is they're going to, um, you need this book in order to complete the lessons for day four. So if you don't have the book, you won't be able to do day four lessons. And what they're going to do, I just opened this randomly. Um, the 10 commandments. Yeah. The 10 commandments. So they're going to read, try to get this. You can see it. They're going to read anyway the Bible story. If you want to read it out of the Bible, they give the reference there. Um, and then you're going to ask the questions here. Again, this is to be done orally. Um, and so the question here is, where was God when he spoke to the people? What do we call the 10 rules God gave? And who are we to love the most? And so that's going to be dialogue. And then... There's a scripture verse here. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy, James 4, 12a. They're going to write that down. And I really encourage the moms or whoever's doing the teaching to memorize the scripture with their student because that really gives the student, um, I think it empowers them. It makes it fun. It's like, hey, mom's doing this too. Mm -hmm. um, so I encourage the, the teacher to memorize with the student. Then they're going to sketch they're going to sketch the uh, image. Now, these are really beautiful um, watercolor images, and they're going to write the, um, the caption for the image in their, in their book. But if your student is not good at um, artistic drawings, I'm not either. I'm terrible, and I some of my kids are fantastic. They're very artistic, and some of them are like me. Um, but I still, even though I'm not good at it, I think it's really important for that hand-eye coordination and for them to enjoy and have fun with it, even if they can't um, produce re perfect reproductions. But what I would suggest for those students is just pull out one person or one, it could be an animal, it could be just the mountain that you say, okay, just work on this part. You could even cover the rest up with a piece of paper and let them focus on just one element out of the, the picture, yeah. And then um, color it in. So some students are gonna get elaborate with this exercise. Some students are going to barely get through it, um, but it's still important for them to work on this skill. And that will carry with them. Again, we're looking at life learners here. Mm -hmm. And how often, whether we're having to draw a map for somebody, there's, there, there just comes times where we have to sketch something out. Maybe we're teaching a class or something like that. And so the drawing lessons that they're going to take from this, I mean, it's not like there's an actual lesson, but they get their get to try out 
reproducing, drawing these things, it's really going to help them in life, all of life. But it's also helping that hand-eye coordination. It's helping that attention to detail. It's helping them really dive into this picture to see all that's in it. It's a picture study without actually calling it a picture study. Right. And so on day four in the actual book, that's what it's going to look like. So they're going to copy the scripture. If you want to do it in King James, you're welcome to do use your own version. And this is where they're going to do the reproduction. And this is where they're going to do the caption. And so that's the day four. And that's why you need this. But this book, you buy it once and you, you're going to use it in levels three, four, and five. Okay. Okay, and so that day is going to look the same um, every single time. So you can see, whoops, story, image, three questions, scripture. Every single page is laid out like that. Story, image, three questions. Very, even the stories are very high quality the way it's done. Yeah, it's a great book. It really is a good book. Um, how this came came to be is my copy at home still has a sticky tab note on it from Craig. And Craig just sent it home with Randy to me with a little note saying, hey, this is a fantastic book. Do you think you could um, somehow incorporate it in similar to how we use the other book in the Bible grammar course? Right. And so um, I looked at it, and I was really impressed with the book and really wanted to use it. We sell it as an add-on, not as part of the kit, because it is a supplement for the, all three. And uh, some of you that might have ordered pre-order and that type of thing, you may need to add this. Um, just right. because in, in the early stages, as we were doing the marketing, we just didn't have it on the radar. So, well, good. Well, one thing I'll say is, as we're talking to um, especially at the lower levels, a lot of these curriculums are for first, second, third grade. We often look at our children and we think that they have a mature brain that we have. It's taken my brain 49 years to develop patterns, habits, um, likes, dislikes, you name it, to be able to comprehend certain things and, and whatnot. Our children are in the process of developing and so there's a growing brain. There's a there's a um, mm -hmm. a lot of things are happening. And sometimes we look at our student who's struggling with a new concept, or maybe they're not grasping something right away. And we think it's it's they're just strong willed. They're being stubborn. They're fighting us. They don't like us. We personalize it, whatever. But to take a step back and realize they're growing, they're developing, and give them room for growth, right? Rather than expecting them to have a mature brain. And the other thing that we do, um, and it's come out of our traditional school background, we tend to say, okay, in all these subjects, math, English, social studies, science, they are to accelerate just like this each year. But that's not how God designed us. God designed us as individuals with strengths and weaknesses. And our brain does not know that it's supposed to, it's expected to jump up evenly with every single subject in the way prescribed by whoever out there has right. said this. And so we're going to have kids that may excel in math, but the language part, they're they haven't gotten down and they're actually going to experience more progress by going back in language arts and going ahead in math. But we're not accustomed to that in our society. Mm -hmm. And so I would encourage parents to break out of those molds and go by their parent, their students needs and their abilities and where their brain is. Now, they may be able to skip ahead at some point. Like for our daughter, my goodness. I mean, we didn't, she, when it clicked, it clicked. We didn't right. have to keep her way back. She was able to jump ahead. She accelerated, yeah. Yeah, and so you have to keep that in mind. Um, and we have the three on it. It's level three. Um, but what a lot of parents are doing is they're pulling out this, page right here that says design for grade three in a one-year course just 
pull it right out of the book before you give it to your student if you're using it with an older student. The thing is, we have to give it, this is the benchmark that we had in mind when we created it. Right. But it's a tool, and we want you to use it however it best meets the needs of your students. Absolutely. Absolutely. And another thing that I would say is for those that are need level four, I need level four. I'm waiting on level four to get finished. So I have great incentive to get level four done. But I'm only one person. I can only work so fast with the family and, yeah, yeah. yeah editing all these other great things that are coming out. So um, what I'm, I just want to share what I'm doing for my son. Um, what I did is I took the last quarter of level three, and that's what we're going to do. That's how we're going to start. If I find that there's some things that he needs to go back and review, we will go back to the original lessons on those things and review it. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into level four as soon as it comes out, and we just won't do the last quarter of level four, which is a review of level four. Okay. So they could actually buy the digital copy. Somebody could buy the digital copy. Correct. And just print off the last quarter. Yes. And do that type yep. of thing. And that's that's my personal plan for what I'm doing. Yep. And I'm excited about it. I, I think my son's going to really enjoy it. We've yet to find a language arts course that he's really liked. So that's going to be interesting to see. Because most language arts courses are boring. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... Um, Thank you for joining me. You're welcome. Um, we Thursday, I'm going to be done teaching tips. The, the topic is winning the day. And just a reminder to win the day. So I uh, hope you can join us for that. If you have any questions, be sure to contact us uh, or, or comment through um, here. You may have to answer those because I have Brighton this afternoon. Yay. I, I'm excited. I mean, yay for me answering. Oh, for all you the answering, yeah. You. yeah. She is adorable, but I will not be able to do anything. But she is so cute, and yeah. she's. But I call her our little tornado. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she is so cute. I'm looking forward to having her this afternoon. So fun. you're gonna have to answer all the questions. Yeah. I Usually, if I've done a live, I try to jump in there and help answer the questions. So the way it goes is. Rebecca asked, three, three is, is out. Yes, three is three out. Is out. It, it's uh, just starting to ship. They're sending out. Yes, and Rebecca, I, I actually owe you an email, and so I'll, I'll address that too because i got to <laughs> send it. And, um, yeah. So, okay. I think that was it. So, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I was going to say in the comments, if I answer a question and then it's edited, so the first version was mine, the re-answer, the correct answer, or the corrected grammar would be you. <laughs> That's how you know. All right. Uh, well, All right. I edit some of my own too, but usually I do it as soon as I hit the send. I don't ever edit yours, just so you know. No, I edit yours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did. I did just this morning or yesterday yeah. yeah i don't have time for all the details i know all right <laughs> that's why i go through and edit because my name's on there truth all right guys hey it's uh, fun to connect with you guys and we pray this is a blessing you are certainly a blessing to us we thank you for being part of this group and the privilege it is and an honor it is to serve you and your families absolutely to raise up a generation for such a time as this to fight goliath that we never imagined i'm getting my buzzwords together so all right <laughs> thank you guys talk to you thursday